this casting looks so good that there's really not much to, to deburr. You know, like on a cast iron block, you would be grinding the casting lines and there'd be some slag or whatever laid over and you'd have to dress that up. But it really, really looks good. They've deburred it well all along here. I mean, you're really, really going to have to look close to try to find anything that anything for you to do. It's done very nice. And as you know, it doesn't have an internal oil pickup, so you don't see a hole here for the oil to come into the pump. You have to use an external line, which a Hemi wants an external line anyway, not sucking out of a little straw, coming feeding it oil. It wants a whole bunch of it. So this is called, this oil gal here that feeds your mains, this is called priority oiling. In other words, priority main oiling. So where the oil goes into the block, it goes straight to the main bearings before anything else. So that's considered a good thing. And the street hemi motor mount, you know, that looks a little squashed because it is. The street hemi motor mount has a bolt about right here and they had to move it down to have the oil galley here. So I'll have to redo that motor mount to put it on the test stand. But it looks like, I think I can cut that one off and shape it a little bit and I think I can make that fit. This sticks up a couple thousandths higher than this, but that's not a problem. I can take a little ball mill and draw a line on the back side of it. I think I'm going to be able to make that work okay. That won't be a problem. The camera won't pick up on this very good, I don't think, but where, where it was machined in, in lots of areas, you'll see a little bit of peach fuzz there. It's, it's nothing really, but that's exactly what will fall off and go in your oil. So, and, and, and you'll see that on any block you buy, but, but that's about all you can find on here, really, to, to work with. And, of course, you're just going to take a little piece of sandpaper on the tip of your finger, and you're just going to wipe that off of there. There's really nothing to it, but it's just, you know, go all over it. Any place where you see that they've done any machining, there's liable to be a little burr or peach fuzz like this. I mean, you can nearly wipe that off with your finger. And just go over it and make sure that Everything's perfect. You know, look your stuff over. I guess, uh, I, oh, I, I checked out the rest of the cam tunnel, and this one was a little looser than I wanted, but the number one, you know, the other day, at the end of that other video, it was a little tight, and I've got to call Ray and ask him what he wants me to do about that. I don't know of a good way and he'll I'm sure he'll have an explanation for me. In the first episode I was supposed to tell you what we're trying to do here but I was so busy trying to get it unboxed and get it on the engine stand and look it over that we should have said something but in the previous build which was I think the playlist is building your 426 Hemi in that build, we were trying to replicate what somebody would build for their car, street rod, bracket car, boat, whatever. We were trying to build out of parts that were available and, and what a normal person would do. And we tried to keep uh, the price down on the pieces we were buying and everything to make it all a little easier on the billfold. So I think in that engine we ended up with a hair under 20,000 in parts without the intake and carburetors. But this is going to be going a different direction. Uh, I've been working on this a couple years trying to gather some the Keith Black parts, the parts he made. I wanted uh, some heads gear drive, valve covers, breathers, oil pump, uh, rocker stands, rocker shafts. That was the, supposed to be the theme for this motor. But 
I've never found any heads that were worth having. One set was on racing junk, and some guy got them before I did. But And I can't believe I haven't found a gear drive. He sold hundreds of those, I'm sure. And I did find one for a raised cam, but nothing for a standard cam. So I thought we ought to just do it anyway. And I've, I've got those heads that Stage 5 made me for a KB block before. They closed up, and I and I've got I've got some of the pieces, but anyway, that's the theme of this build. We're we're going to try to use as many Keith Black parts as we can, and instead of worrying about a budget, we're just going to forget that there is a budget and just let the chips fall where they may. But anyway, that's the plan. I should have said that in the first you know, kind of an introduction to the first video of this build, but I didn't. But now, uh, let's put it in the hone and start uh, honing out the cylinders and seeing what we got. Okay, so we're going to do the home job on the block. We're just testing right now. We're not trying to hone this to size yet. They left eight or nine thousandths in here to hone out. And so what we're trying to do right now is we're just going to practice on how we're going to do the surface finish when we get down to the end. You can't wait till you get to the end and then find out that you're unhappy with the finish because there's no ma no material left for you to hone out. So you practice out here where you don't have anything to worry about. Then after we perfect the process, I won't make you sit through that boring process, but after we perfect the process, then we know what to do. We don't have to have a torque plate on here for now. We're not even really trying to do anything except practicing on what we're going to do to this cylinder to make it come out with the numbers that we want at the end and we'll go over the numbers in a minute here. In the old days all a machinist had to do honing a block was make sure he hits the size that he's going to and make sure that it's the same size top and bottom. No taper in other words, straight cylinder. And he didn't have to really do anything else because the RA, the, that's the roughness average, that's how smooth it is. That was really controlled by the stones. If you're putting the same amount of pressure on there and you'll get a feel for that, how that works, then, then you're going to hit the same RA. That stone is going to give you that RA, roughness average. So like on a 64, 65 race hemi, they a book called for 30 to 40 RA. That's how smooth it is. Then when the Street Hemi came out, they called for 25 to 30 RA. And so that's fine. All you do is go from using a whatever that Stone gives you, a, the 30 to 40, and that might have been a, two, uh, a 220 or something like that, 240 or whatever. So if you wanted it smoother than that, you just go to a finer Stone. So you go to a, a 240, whatever the next one down is to get a finer finish. And you don't have to do anything different. You're just still honing, but those stones give you a finer finish, just like coarse sandpaper and, and fine sandpaper. But you can feel the difference. I did this with a different stone than this, and it's obvious which one is the smoothest. So that's all they had to do. Then Now we have all this electronic precision equipment that that tells us a lot more about the finish and now there's a lot more things to do there's other numbers like RVK, RPK, RK and RZ and it's hard to hit all five of those at once now the last two blocks that I did came out just wonderful wonderful but they weren't this same material. These are, they call them ductile iron sleeves. 
and that's fine but but that's no guarantee that it's going to be like the last two blocks so I have to practice out here where we've got all this metal to work with and then once I get to where I can hit the numbers then all I have to do is finish the block to size and do whatever I have to do at the end to get the finish we want and then it'll be over okay this is going to be our cylinder in this demonstration so let's say the block was delivered to you smooth as glass and by the way we've all torn down engines with the cylinders as smooth as glass and it ran fine but they say we're supposed to be more high-tech than that so we're gonna hone this cylinder which is perfectly smooth now you've seen the cross hatch in a cylinder after it's been honed well what made those marks well that's the grit in the stone the stone has got grit in it and it is scratching your cylinders to give you your hone job so when it on that grit scratches that cylinder that's what it looks like you If that was your cylinder, that is called RVK. How deep is that scratch? And I think we're talking about millions here, so this is a kind of a kind of a precision deal. So that's your RVK. Now when you scratched that cylinder, that material that didn't just disappear, you didn't mill it out and blow it away. Now that material is stacked up right beside the groove. So the top of those peaks is your RPK. How high are the peaks? So RVK is the bottom of the valley, RPK is the top. Now, on this honing, the way we do it now, and, and our, our RA, our roughness average, the only thing they used to look at, we'll end up not having to look at it because when we get done with this, it's going to be perfect anyway. So, how are we going to do it? What, what, what do we need to do? The first number we need to hit, which is also a very hard one, is... RVK. Total seal wants 50 or more. 50 or more, well that's pretty deep. So we're gonna have to do whatever it takes in grit size and in pressure to get at least 50 RVK. When we get done, we start out. That's our valleys that's our peaks the next number we're going to try to hit is RK which Dick Maskin says is the only number that matters RK what RK is what we're doing is called a plateau hone here's the only thing you used to get you hone it and that's what you're left with and everybody was happy but now they want it fancier so we're going to do what's called a plateau hone, which means we're going to take this hone job that we just did, and we're going to cut these peaks off. And what this does is simulate, like they used to say, drive your car 500 miles to break it in. So we're going to simulate breaking in that car. We're going to chop the peaks off, with the hone, light pressure, fine stone, and that's going to leave us RK, which is very important. So, RPK is going to end up landing in a place where we'll take it anyway. RZ is the highest peak to the lowest valley. When they want 
about 10 to 12 times R rate, which is normally not a problem. You're going to get that anyway, and I don't even really know how much that matters. Total Seal says that matters. Dick Maskin says that's the only thing that matters. And that number is going to end up, I don't know if you'll ever, you'll never miss that by doing a proper plateau hone, I don't think. And I don't think you're going to ever miss RPK. But that is hard to hit. I've, I, I rarely hit that. And RK, well, that's kind of fine tuning, you know. That's, you're going to have to work to get these two right. It's not. It's not just going to fall in your lap. So, that's what I'll work on. Why does life have to be so difficult? This, I started out, it was way too rough. And I went to this, and it was way too rough. I went to this, way too, still. So then, I get virtually everything perfect. Except one. And, of course, we're talking about millionths of an inch here. RA20, that's perfect. RVK56, that's perfect. RPK13, that's perfect. RZ201, that's perfect. But the RK is 48. See, it's hard to hit all five of them at once, but I'm going to give it a few more. I'll start on another cylinder and go start from scratch again and hopefully get this RK down to something I can live with and then it'll be right. Okay, now let's see what we get. I gave it two more strokes. So this is ten strokes for the plateau. RZ221. K37. Well, if the rest of these numbers look like that, I'm going with it. RPK 13. It's hard to miss that. RVK 59. Everybody in the world loves that. I don't even know if I ever did one that good. RA 15. Well, that's it, folks. I know our goal was low 30s. And we've got 37. I mean, I could, uh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to say that's good enough for me, just, just, just forget it. Uh, everything looks good, so let's just, uh, let's go with it. I'll pull the whole thing to size, for, I'll put on the torque plate, and then hone everything to size and then do the finishing strokes, 10 strokes, and we'll be right where we want to be.